G'day, it's Rowan, and tonight I'm going to make a coffee tamp handle. So what's the problem I'm trying to solve? Well, I haven't given my brother a birthday present for a few years, and I know he uses a plastic tamp with his coffee machine. I reckon we can make something a little bit more stylish, maybe using some timber from mum and dad's old property. So this is a nice easy wood lathing project but I'd like to say that I'm not an expert and this is not a how-to video it's just showing the process I went through to make my project. I've used a roughing gouge, a skew chisel, a small roughing gouge and a parting tool. First thing to do is to go and get some wood. Let's have a look. Very messy wood shape. No. No. This might be good. It's thick enough for the handle. I can cut down either side. The spit will turn the center. And if there's any cracks in there, I can throw those bits out and I've got a few options in there. This is Osage Orange. Beautiful growth rings, and when you finish it, it comes up a nice golden yellow. Let's give this a crack. First thing I'll do is square this off so it's ready to spindle turn in the lathe. I also want to have a look at some of these cracks on the end and see how far they go. And there's always time for another brew. You can see the difference here when I turn this around where I've cut it freshly. The, um, the timber comes up a lovely yellow when it's fresh. Now that I've cut that to the bandsaw, it's given me a rough edge to work with. It's just enough that I can screw this onto the timber there. I'll put a couple of screws through here in the section that I'm not going to end up using. And then I can run it through the table saw and get a parallel piece of timber. It's not super necessary to do all this, you could just use a handsaw. This Osage Orange is quite a hard timber, so I'm going to um, cut some slots in it with a bandsaw just to help me centre it up. Now I'm no expert at making coffee, but I do like the three T's, the tamp, tap and twist. I'm using an overhand grip with a roughing gouge, which helps me keep control of the tool. Hey guys, quick interruption. I've got a lot of ideas of stuff I want to make videos for. All I need is for you guys to subscribe. Please help me out by subscribing to my channel 
and hit the little bell icon so you get notified when new releases come out. Thank you. As you can see with the skew chisel, I'm only cutting on the bottom half of the blade. That allows me to control the cut and it's not too dangerous. You can see the nice curly shavings coming off that indicates I'm getting a nice cut. Now that I've dressed down this piece of timber, made it round, I'll chop off the length I need for this tamp handle and I'll put it back in the chuck and I'll drill the hole that's going to have the bolt glued into it. The bolt screws into the stainless steel coffee tamp base. You can see I mark a line on my drill shank here so I know I can measure. I can start the line flush with the tailstock here and then I can drill in and it's easy to measure how far I'm drilling in. Okay so here's where I had the first problem. As you can see here the, um, the hole I'm drilling probably should have drilled a pilot hole first to guide the larger drill bit. You can see the drill bit wobbling around a bit and as a result even though I dressed the uh, outside of this piece when I rechucked it from the other side um, the bolt hole was still a little bit off center and I'll show you how I fixed that later on. So now that I've drilled my hole I'm going to turn this piece around and rechuck it so I can turn the rounded handle from the other side. I'm not showing the whole sanding process, but basically I started with, uh, um, I think this is about 80 the grit, this um, sanding pad, and I just worked through 200, 400, 600, all the way down to 1500. Um, just working it and working it, and trying to get a nice transition in those uh, round tangents. I lost this piece at one point, so I had to cut down a bit. You can see there's not enough room in here to get the parting tool in. I need all of this base but what I can do is um, just loosen the chuck and drag the whole piece out a bit and I can you can see I've got about 10 mil in here so there's plenty of meat in there to move it out and part it off all the steps are listed in the comments below I don't always pour milk like that. I probably should have just moved the camera. So because I had problems drilling in the dead center, when I tapped the thread, and screwed it down to test fit everything it wasn't actually in the middle you could see the handle was offset by about half a mil compared to the base so to fix this i just drilled out the hole more so i could move the um basically i'm not using the thread anymore i'm just gluing the threaded bolt into the timber with uh, epoxy and that way i can just slide it around to position it dead center then clamp it down and let it dry hopefully that'll be strong enough um, and it won't break off in the future. So I used a vinyl 
concealer on the timber first. It's not really that necessary. Um, it's a product I use on my banjo builds, but the um, the gloss finish coat I used on this just out of a spray pack. It's um, your standard hardware fair, and it does go straight on timber, so it probably would have been fine. I gave it about four or five coats, waiting an hour in between each coat and giving it a light sand with 600. When it was all finished and, and um, nicely dry, I polished it with some auto uh, finish and a foam buffing pad. All in all, it turned out okay, but some of the cracks opened up a little bit, so the finish wasn't as smooth as I'd like. Um, if I was gonna do this again, I'd probably be a bit more picky with the timber I used to make sure it was completely solid with no cracks. Thanks for watching the build. If you're into coffee stuff, I've got a, another coffee related build coming up shortly. I'm going to build a trolley for my coffee roaster with a little drawer that slides out for the coffee roasting journal. Stay tuned for that one. Thanks for watching.